Hello, everyone, and welcome to the GRESB Inside ESG event series. Today, our topic is about ESG strategy and looking more specifically into water management. My name is Evan Kirby, and I'm a manager on the member relations team at GRESB. Um, I'm going on four years now with the company in various capacities as GRESB has been able to grow. We're very excited to be co-hosting this event with our premier partner, SmartBotton. I thought I would start with some introductions of our organizations. So what does SmartBotton do? <clears throat> SmartBotton monitors and analyzes water consumption through main meters and submeters in various types of assets like office and residential. Their comprehensive water efficiency services work with any meter in any building around the world and help save water, time, and money, and of course is contributing to a more resource efficient and sustainable future. I'd also like, like to briefly introduce Grez, as we have many attendees on the call today that have, may or may not have been directly involved with Grez reporting in the past. Mission-driven and investor-led, Grez is the Environmental, Social, and Governance, or ESG benchmark for real assets. We work in collaboration with the industry to provide standardized and validated ESG data to the capital markets. The 2022 real estate benchmark covers more than 1,800 property companies, REITs, funds, and developers. Our coverage for infrastructure includes over 800 infrastructure funds and assets. Combined, Grez represents $8.6 trillion in U.S. dollars in real asset value. Today, we are excited to be talking about a slightly different topic than we typically hear about in the context of ESG and sustainability, which is water management. With endless, with endless events on energy and carbon, we're hoping that spending some time digging into how organizations approach water management within their over, overall ESG strategy will prove insightful and engaging. Water is an important topic in the context of sustainability and is a measured performance metric within the context of the GRESP assessments. GRESP assesses water in several ways when looking at the real estate assessment. <clears throat> Across the assessment, water makes up about 10 points out of the 100 total points, meaning it's the second most important performance metric in terms of score, only behind energy. The most important metric for water is data coverage, meaning how much water data you have based on the floor area of the portfolio of buildings over a 12-month period. In addition, GRESB assesses year-over-year -year water consumption changes, as well as water reuse and recycling metrics. Lastly, we're also collecting water efficiency measures implemented at the asset level, such as smart metering systems or high-efficiency fixtures. Our premier partner, SmartBotton, assists with many of the required metrics for GRESB reporting and directly helps achieve points related to data coverage as an example. We'll be hearing more about this in the keynote presentation in just a couple of minutes. And yeah, in terms of today's agenda, um, we will be starting with a 10 to 15 minute keynote from the SmartBotton team on strategies for water efficiency. This will be followed up by a panel discussion on best practices for water management with representatives from AXA IM, Cromwell Property Group, and Fabagea, all of whom are mutual clients of Gresman SmartBotton. Lastly, we will have some time at the end for a Q&A. So some housekeeping, please feel, feel free to post questions throughout the event in the chat chat box on the right side of your screen. If your question is specific to a certain speaker, please also mention this in the question so I can properly allocate it towards the end. Um, yeah, we've got a great turnout for the event with over about 500 people registered. So I'm hoping we'll have some great questions posed to the speakers. And with that, I will now turn it over to Carl from the SmartBotton team. Thank you, Kevin. Um, we are delighted to be here and be able to talk about what we think will be one of the defining issues for our generation, water management. I hope you can all hear me well. Uh, the date is very well uh, suited for, the, for this event. It's the eve of the World Water Day, which is happening tomorrow uh, with the theme, Be the Change. Now we at SmartVat and we celebrate World Water Day every day of the year, you can say. Um, we have been doing so for the last 10 years. Uh, our mission is really to help enable more water efficient communities. We're very happy to see the interest in this event. Uh, all of you attendees coming here to hear about water and also the support we're now getting from GRESP and other <coughs> stakeholders in the ecosystem to advance water on the ESG agenda. My name is Carl Jepson. I'm the head of business development with SmartVatten. I am talking to you from our office here in Stockholm, Sweden today. And with me today, I also have uh, Hanna here. Hanna, if you would like to introduce yourself also. Uh, Hanna is muted, so we, we cannot hear Hanna for the moment, I think. Right. 
Thank you, Carl. I think that is better. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Hanna. I work as a key account manager uh, for Smartvatten, also based in Stockholm, Sweden, but my clients are spread out across Europe. Thank you, Anna. So today we're going to give an overview of the water situation across Europe and how the real estate sector can improve water management with technologies that are available already today. And you'll then be able to hear from, from the panel of our distinguished guests here, which Kevin introduced, about their ways of uh, managing water and how water plays an important role in their overall ESG strategies. But for now, let's take a moment to think about think back about the summer of 2022. I hope and I'm sure there will be some nice memories brought to mind. But also on a more serious note, many of you might remember this was the driest summer in Europe in over 500 years. So water issues are becoming more tangible for all of us. Droughts and water scarcity are no more rare or extreme events. As the numbers tell you here on this slide, more than 30% of the inhabitants in Europe are affected by water scarcity. And this is already an old number. I think the number is even higher today. And also because of the consequences of water scarcity, what it has on our lives, the nature around us, for food, for energy production, I would say that the correct number is 100%. All of us will directly or indirectly feel the consequences of increasing water shortages. Now, it has also become clear that it will not take 500 years until we experience a similar drought again. Instead, what we're seeing is an effect of the changing weather patterns driven by climate change and as the Guardian calls it, this is going to be the new normal. As you can see on the map, vast areas of Europe are already affected by water scarcity. And I think many of you have seen the pictures or even experienced firsthand uh, what's going on in the Alps right now. The lack of snowfall and rainfall in Europe indicates that we are also facing similar water shortages in the coming summer here. So with the widespread implications, <clears throat> the water issues are a shared challenge across all sectors of our communities. One important way to look at this is the so-called water energy nexus. This is a fundamental principle that explains the interdependence of water and energy meaning that for almost all types of energy production, significant amounts of water is required. Whether this is nuclear, fossil, or even renewable energy sources, there is water required to either produce the equipment used for energy production or in the process itself. But also correspondingly, water production re requires a lot of energy. There is energy needed for water treatment, water pumping, distribution, and even more so for wastewater collection and wastewater treatment. One to two kilowatt hours per cubic meter can be assumed to be used for water production in this cycle. And furthermore, a lot of energy is also consumed uh, <clears throat> when producing the hot water that we're using in our taps. All in all, with this example that we have on the slide here, more than 10%, 12% in Sweden, of the total annual energy production is used for handling water in this way. However, the way I look at this, the water energy nexus also represents a great opportunity. By saving water, we will also be saving energy. So how are then using water across the water cycle? Well, <clears throat> the somewhat sad answer is that we're wasting a lot of it. When you sum up the leakages from the source or from the purification plants 
uh, all the way across the cycle, there is enormous volumes leaking out from the system already today. Around the world, water utilities are battling with leakages in the numbers of 10 to 20 or even higher percentages. This is the normal across our societies. There is a very significant renovation need across the uh, sector. Uh, we have in our Western world pipelines that are more than 100 years old and that need renovation. This will also drive up the cost for water in the future. We're expecting that uh, all of the water users will have to pay that through higher tariffs in the very near future also. Furthermore, at Smart Button, where we're focused on the, on the customer side of the, <clears throat> of the water cycle here, we see leakages in about 50% of the buildings every month. And with the average leak being 1.7 liters per minute, that quickly adds up. So that would add up in, if in 30 days, if no action is taken, that means 80 cubic meters. So that is 80,000 liters running out uh, from an average leak. So clearly there's a need for actions <coughs> around water management and those actions need to span across the whole society here. Regulators like the EU are increasingly focusing on the water. Water is integrated now, will be covered in the NFRD. It'll be covered in the EU taxonomy and also actually through the energy efficiency directive, where the requirement to individually measure hot water consumption in apartments is an example of that. However, we see that it's not the regulation that is driving the real estate industry forward right now. What we hear and see from many of our partners and clients and other stakeholders is that it's the certifications like GRESP that are the primary incentive and the most tangible objective that we're working towards. As Kevin mentioned, water is the second most important objective and stands for 10% of the overall GRESP scoring system. And gaining points on the water side is sometimes a very cost-effective way to actually um, <clears throat> improve the, the scoring overall for a property. So we all understand there is a huge need for water management going forward, and there is a huge will to do it also. But in practice, <clears throat> the situation might look like this in many cases. So Hanna will take us through an overview of how you can actually move on from this point. Well, thank you very much, Carl. Um, I'm really happy that we are here today and we actually have the chance to talk more about water. Um, now, I meet many property owners that faces the challenges with getting quality data to work with. Many of them also have a geographical spread, meaning you have different water meters, water companies, or different kind of setups. And the reporting can be very time consuming. So the dream scenario here would be to have a complete overview of all your properties into one platform where we then can follow the water consumption, pattern, leaks, etc. And then you will be able to make the right decision and investments going forward. So how do we do this? How do we get there? Well, uh, Carl, if you turn to the next slide, please. I will talk a little bit about that. Thank you. Step one, get the overview on your properties and see how they are doing. With our range of tools, we are able to connect almost any existing water meter and digitize the reading and um, provide you with minute level data. So um, this is really easy to install. Anyone can do it. It takes about five minutes. And uh, it's easy to get started and it's also easy to scale up across your portfolio. We actually have a lot of clients that are surprised how easy it is to install and that they can do it themselves. Now, if you look at the picture in the middle, once you're up and running, 
um, you uh, will be able to follow the water consumption and you will get automated leak alerts, you will get consumption reports. And furthermore, if you look to the right, you will be able to uh, receive data-driven assessments, which indicate on which property it is recommended to take uh, the next step. And what could that be? Well, for example, uh, connecting additional metering points, installing smart valves or water saving equipment. And now one thing we also have learned along the way is that our clients really appreciate our customer success team. They will help you get the most value of the data and make sure that you reach those ESG goals. But with that being said, it's not that hard to get started and we will be with you every step of the way towards your goals and, of course, earning those points from uh, RESP. So, Carl, do you have something to add to this slide? Well, <clears throat> thank you, Johanna, for the insights. And I have nothing to add to the slide in general, but I would just close out this keynote by um, <clears throat> observing that it's very clear that technology is not the obstacle really for advancing water management. But once implemented, it's also very important that we make sure we use the data in the right way, eliminate noise from the data, make sure we get quality alarms uh, and insights that really can engage the organization, even uh, maybe the tenants. So <clears throat> with that, I would like to turn to the panel to discuss water strategies and the implementation of those. And I'd like to start it out first with an introduction of our panelists, of course. Um, <clears throat> starting with uh, Cromwell, maybe uh, Sandrine, if you would like to introduce yourself. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Sandrine Fogrené, ESG manager at, uh, for Europe at Cromwell. Um, we uh, bit, you know, bit just over four years and we're managing um, so investment management, fund management for diverse assets, logistics and office buildings mainly. Thank okay, you. I'll... You also have Adi there. Adi, please. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Adi Vizula. Um, I'm with the company Cromwell since 2020, December. Um, I'm a project manager and yeah, one of the projects is making sure that uh, we get all smart water meters across our portfolio. Thank you, Adi. And then we have uh, Fabi Guy here, represented by Caroline Odin. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Caroline Dean and I am an energy manager at Fabi And uh, for those of you who just know, we are a real estate company in, in Stockholm, uh, mainly focusing on offices. Um, and we, have, we have a big uh, management portfolio, but we also build uh, new buildings. Thank you, Caroline. And we also have AXA I am with us here, represented by Juliet. Hi, everyone. Juliette Lefebure. I'm Deputy Head of Responsible Investment for AXA IM. Um, for AXA IM sorry. We are um, in the Alternatives Business Unit. Um, we manage different types of uh, assets. I'm focused on real estate. Uh, we manage uh, 90 billion of real estate assets uh, across, uh, like globally. Uh, and we are the leading uh, asset manager in Europe. Thank you. And your colleague Thomas is here also. Yes, thanks. Um, on my side, also part of XIM, uh, previously uh, ESG lead for Benelux and, uh, and Germany. Currently also more of um, a global focus together with uh, Juliette and have been working with uh, Smartfaton for already uh, two years now, I think. Thanks, Carl. Thank you. And, and um, for the panel discussion, the first question would go to XIM. And, um, could you share with us and the audience the role that water plays in the overall ESG strategy? Yeah, sure. So water has been a key component of the assessment of buildings environmental performance for a long time now for us. So we've set in 2016 an internal ESG rating to assess the ESG performance of our building. 
uh, we do this on a yearly basis. It's really for us uh, a way to monitor the improvement of the SG performance of our assets during the ownership. Um, to give you an idea, in 2022, we assessed 55 uh, billion of AUMs through this rating. And this rating was defined um, using key market frameworks, of course, such as GRASP, such as certification, but also reflecting in the weighting our own priorities. Within this rating, water-related uh, factors represent 9% of the total score, which is, as you can see, really important. We assess water performance of our real estate assets through two main questions. So the first one is linked to the deployment of water efficiency measures to improve uh, and optimize the use of water in our buildings. And the second one is linked to the water performance of our buildings, so uh, water intensity in our buildings. And the second one is really challenging because um, to properly assess uh, the second criteria, it means we, we have to access complete, accurate, and granular data. But we also need to access uh, benchmarks to understand you know, how our assets compare to uh, you know, similar asset type in similar geographies. <clears throat> Absolutely. And, and um, maybe Thomas can explain a little bit more in detail how you're actually implementing the strategies around water then. Thanks, Carl. Uh, I hope everyone can can hear me well because um, my laptop is trying to become the first self-flying uh, laptop, or at least that's what it's sounding like. Um, but in terms to to focus at how we approach water, uh, you know, practically, is actually we try to work with key partners, of which Smartfatten is definitely one. Not only in terms of um, data availability, but also real action. So to us. Um, getting access to data was actually one of the first steps and now we're actually assessing okay how do we move from data availability to actually real action to um, ensuring that our property management teams react to leak detection um, but also that we onboard the other stakeholders in this ecosystem being facility managers property managers to take a step back and um, to look at how the initial relationship with Svartvatten started was in, in Benelux and Germany we start with a handful of assets um, and um, after that, oh, there was a certain success. Um, we have expanded currently to approximately 300 buildings, uh, not only in Benelux and, uh, and Germany, but also a lot beyond. So we're approximately at 300 buildings now, um, and we're rapidly evolving to other assets in those nine countries which we currently cover, uh, with the plan to, to keep expanding, but also to assess, okay, based on the data, what can we do with this? Um, so important for us is not only to understand what are what are our assets using in terms of water but also are they efficient so we're actually now trying to assess with the data what can we do with it can we build benchmarks with it and then in a second layer how do we ensure that our property managers the people day-to-day -day working with these kind of assets react to um to the leak alerts to avoid that they uh, that uh, um, water is lost prime example we had with one of our assets in luxembourg where um, we got a leakage alert of, of 190 liters per minute. And if we didn't have Smartfatten, I have another example where we didn't have it, um, there would be no way that we would have noticed until the entire basement or whatever area that was being flooded uh, would be completely underwater. Um, and an asset where we didn't have Smartfatten, for example, um, we also had a leak and we, we had no clue uh, until that there was an entire uh, flooding and as well when we got the, the final uh, invoice that um, the water consumption not only doubled but tripled um, and that's basically the physical effect that you can see uh, maybe to end in in terms of how we practically approach everything is a key way that we work with you know, the kind of partners that we have such as smartphone is we try to focus on innovation so we not only try to assess okay does it work then we scale it but we also check how can we go beyond so basically how can we move from data availability as i've mentioned to actually using the data to do analysis, but also reacting, working with smartphones, for example, to uh, develop a risk assessment specifically for GRASP, using all of the data we've um, we've uh, we've gathered, but also to assess how can we more efficiently deploy it, train our, our stakeholders, and go beyond. So it's really more instead of um, a service provider client relationship, it has turned into more of a, a partnership. 
<clears throat> yeah, thank, thank you, Thomas. And I, I think it's really worth highlighting how it was actually the, the GRESP framework that is driving the innovation, the source of the innovation here, how we wanted to find a way to perform those assessments uh, based on the, on the water risk assessment framework from GRESP. And it's been very nice and interesting working with you. Um, <clears throat> ho hopefully that will be a very fruitful exercise for XIM going forward. Yeah. So if we turn it over to, uh, to Cromwell here, um, Sandrine, would you like to explain to the audience a little bit about how water is, is integrated in your ESD strategy and how you're working with that? Um, yeah, we, we do have, um, uh, you know, use uh, GRACE reporting for quite some years and that has allowed us to identify gaps in specifically, and not, not only, but um, also on the water aspect. And uh, and when at the same time, when not um, a couple of years ago, when we started our um, uh, technology journey to set up um, a central hub uh, to be the base to collect all the ESG data for our European portfolio, um, we also wanted to use uh, Gresby partners. Um, so. When we started the journey with DeepKey, we also realized that starting the journey with SmartVatten, they were already also partners together. So um, the whole setup process um, in that central hub um, highlighted a lot of inconsistencies from one country to another, um, specifically around water data, because some countries would be already equipped with smart meters. But some other, you'd have to wait for six months for an invoice and to discover potentially a leak where you, you for one asset from one year to another, you'd have a three or five time consumption. So that wouldn't, from an, so the analysis um, of those is just too late because the leak then is just massive and then it takes time to search for it and to fix it. And um, so we, we wanted to, to be better at that with, um, for, for all the different type of asset, which is more difficult for industrial asset than office, we found out. And at the same time, um, our Dutch team, um, you know, when they started working with um, used smart pattern um, on certain certain assets, um, we realized that it was the good solution for us to, to, to get the proper data and to identify leaks and then take actions to rectify them. So we decided um, that we wanted to expand further to the rest of our European portfolio. And this is what we're doing at the moment. And I'm sorry if I'm in the dark, but I, it seems that the room doesn't want the lights here don't switch off, switch it's on anymore. Sustainable, uh, Sandrine. It's sustainable. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they say that. So, um, so yeah, this is where we are. We, you know, we we quite we're maybe not as advanced as the EXA, EXA team uh, on this uh, data collection journey, but I think we've made good progress. And so far, we only um, we we um, twenty percent of the portfolio covered with Smart Button, but it's um, still an ongoing process. This year, we expect a bit more um, uh, taking into account all the specificities from one country to another. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Sandrine. And and <clears throat> I'd like to also highlight the fact that I mean, smart button is only one piece of the of the overall system that you're working in here, right? Also, and you mentioned that you're you're integrating the data into another platform, right? Yes. Yes. Did so we do have, we can see the, the whole assets in smart pattern. So that means from a water management analysis, I think it's very good for the teams, um, either from a, a European or country view. But at the same time, what, what we also uh, wanted it to have a stream, to streamline the flow of data to our central hub. And that's where um, the fact that you had that partnership uh, with Deep Key. Um, was very key for us in the choice of continuing the integration for the rest of the portfolio in Europe. Yeah, and, and that's something that we see across the board, I would say. I mean, water is, is one, one part of managing an overall building, right? But it doesn't make sense to have a specific system for many, but you want this integration into your okay. overall energy management system and so on. 
that's and important. Um, maybe Carl, it's exactly the same on our side. Uh, we have the same uh, ESG data platform, which is DeepKey, and uh, we've also built strong partnership with them. And we can see that for reporting uh, purpose, but also because we manage so many assets across so many geographies, uh, it's really key for us that there are this kind of partnership that emerge between your different entities as well, so that it is for us the work uh, because reporting and assessing uh, real estate performance is such a challenge, even when preparing for grass reporting. So it's it's really helpful, you know, this kind of connections. Yeah, uh, clearly this is this is key. And, and also, yeah, we're in this together also with GRESP and other players to to help advance the, the strategies here, of course. Um, Adi, would you like to share from, from your perspective the experience of, of really implementing the, the water management technology? Yeah, of course. Um, uh, before I start doing that, um, I hear everybody speaking about making sure that we get all the data in for the ESG, for the GRASP, etc. But I think one of the key points for um, uh, smart water meters or water management is creating awareness of the uh, at the occupier side and in the user side. So it's not just making sure that we all get the information into a, a, a data environment so we can report to the GRASP, but it's also making sure that everybody um, yeah, creates awareness of how much water they are actually using as a tenant, as a user. Okay. Um, if I look at, at, at the water management and making sure that we get all the data in, um, uh, I got in touch with uh, Smart Fatten in, uh, in the past. Um, that was for my former employer. Um, and they showed me how easy it is just with a simple water meter to cover it with uh, a smart meter, which photographs every couple of seconds uh, what the usage is. And based on that, um, it sends out a signal, of course, to um, uh, to the to the portal online, um, which also creates a, a very good uh, securement when it comes to leakages. Um, uh, based based on that, we looked for us as Cromwell uh, at, at the possibility to to enlarge uh, our insight in uh, in water management um, so we chose for smart button. Um i had a lot of conversations with uh, tim twisk i think uh, most of them know him um but our um, uh, portfolio manager uh, asked more than just making sure that we look at water meters and consumption what if we could create a smart uh, smart valve that signal uh, signals a big leakage shuts down the the, the valve so uh, in the case that uh, uh, thomas mentioned uh, no larger uh, leakages come forth um and more damages are um yeah how do you say that um avoided avoided thank you uh, more yeah bigger bigger damages are are avoided uh, furthermore, um, uh, we like the fact that there is a direct notification to uh, yeah, notifications towards our uh, property managers, facility managers, so they can act on it straight away. And that makes sure that we do not use more water than necessary, of course. And I can see in the data I've received over the last two years from uh, from SmartFutton that Although we had a COVID period, uh, the, 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 the consumption has risen, of course, now COVID is over, um, but it's still within the parameters of the past. Um, so we're go doing a good thing, uh, I think, there. Um, yeah, overall, uh, I think if it's smart button or another type of smart meter we can use uh, in our portfolio, it's, 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 it's a big thing to make sure that we get all information. Yeah, and many in the past have been operating almost without any knowledge or, or maybe as Sandrine mentioned, looking at the bills every six months or every one year, right? But every there's quarter. a lot of insights being lost. Yeah, and and the good thing is uh, from uh, if I look at Smartfarten is they 
you guys do not only look at okay we've got a smart meter we put it on, on top of another meter no you're still trying to innovate looking at possibilities for meters who are, uh, who are outside the premises are uh, not easy to ac access there's no electricity point how do we create a, a smart meter that is driven by solar energy or by battery energy etc so always try to in, uh, innovate uh, the, the, the possibilities. So that's a very good thing. Maybe if we're allowed to, to add something uh, from our side on, on this perspective, I think this is, is actually crucial. Um, and I think some of the points mentioned are very valid for not only us, but also other players in the market, being that uh, data access is, is the first, whether you disregard it or not, because um, otherwise you have no clue of what your assets are consuming and you cannot compare. And that's, that's to us, but it's still the first step is getting access to data, allowing us to compare. And then going more granular because in the end i think one of the the main things which carl and uh, what other participants of the panel uh, mentioned is ability to to quickly install it um to allow to integrate it with your overall processes such as deep key on our side but also other kind of tools and and to i, mean, I don't want to turn this too much in a promotional speech for uh, for smart button, but i think if, if something works it works and that, yeah. uh, that's something we can be very transparent about but I think the next step, and, and that's also where I see not only our Cresp and, uh, and Smartphone, is this ecosystem approach. Is actually now that we have access to data, how do we ensure that the right people get the leak alerts? How do you integrate the tenants? How do you integrate the property managers, facility managers? Um, and that's basically the next frontier. So how do we integrate everyone who's concerned with this kind of asset, the tools that we're using, the, the framework developers such as Cresp, and react to it to ensure that we all go in the right direction? Because a uh, lot based on the current discussions and uh, the way the market is looking tends to get a little bit less attention than uh, than energy for example but it doesn't mean it's less important so how do we integrate this in in all of uh, the respective positions how do we move forward um, and that's basically where we are uh, positioning ourselves towards is to ensure that uh, we not only capture data but we move from this kind of, of monitoring to performance based being okay how do we um, monitor or um, judge the, the performance year on year in terms of efficiency, but also how do we ensure that our asset managers and property managers can react to it and know what actions to take. And I think there, the, the proactivity that you mentioned on the side of SmartFatten is very important because it allows us to enter into a proactive discussion and look together at how do we uh, ensure that the data that we capture is correct, is benchmarked and reacted upon. Um, so on that, I would just say, uh, keep on doing what you do and, um, and they were uh, very happy to to, uh, to assist and to um, be a sparring partner, both at the side of Gresp as with uh, Smartfaton, in order to uh, to keep on innovating in the market, not only for this risk assessment, but also protocols, processes, and so forth. Totally agree, uh, Thomas. Yeah, and there, <clears throat> there is still a lot of room for innovation on this side, of course. I would I would say that in general, I feel that water has been a little bit uh, an afterthought um, partially because it's been so cheap uh, water hasn't been a major cost compared to electricity for example on on the building side but i feel that is also changing the overall awareness about water issues um, as well as the water cost going up uh, will change that going forward um, <clears throat> good um, and Speaking about that, I know that for Begia, before we came in, you had already invested in connecting smart water meters across all of your buildings uh, here. Caroline, would you like to uh, take us through uh, the drivers for, for, for Begia to do this investment? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, water is a very important sustainability target for us. And we have a target of saving 2% every year. And uh, we have been following, following our water usage on a monthly basis for many, many years. Uh, but uh, now we have an even more data oriented uh, working method and adding digital meters on all assets and finding ways to analyze our data in smart ways is a big uh, part of that. So that's why we have invested in, in these meters. and. And um, water is still relatively cheap, so uh, cost is not like the only driver for this, even though uh, the prices have increased a lot over the, the last few years. So it's not, still not 
possible to motivate these investments entirely by reduced water cost, uh, not yet at least, but, uh, but we also have other drivers towards more efficient use of water. Uh, for example, the risk uh, perspective is important uh, when it comes to our insurances. And uh, according to our insurance company, in general, approximately 70% of the damages uh, in all buildings today are water related. So that is not only uh, related to leakages, but also from water entering the building uh, from outside when it's a heavy rain or something uh, like that. But it's it's important uh, for us to be in control of, of all things that it can be a potential risk and, and a big cost and water is uh, a big uh, potential risk. Uh, it's also an important factor uh, and driver. Uh, our customer satisfaction of water leakage is often a big impact on our customers. So we uh, wish to avoid that. Uh, and uh, the sustainability area is one big driver for us also uh, and have been for a few years. Uh, when it comes to our sustainability certifications, for example, BREAM and our sustainability benchmark, we report to GRESP every year and it's important to us to perform well uh, there. And uh, we believe in the long run that uh, water will be uh, more and more uh, important uh, in all all of these areas, uh, cost and uh, sustainability and uh, risk. Very good, thank you, Carolina. It's, it's been a pleasure working for Fabigia, yeah, really driving the, the development forward there also with your uh, very advanced approach already to digitalization in your buildings there. Thank you. <laughs> good. I believe, Kevin, uh, we are getting questions in from the audience also, so maybe we conclude the panel discussion here and, and turn it over to the questions from the audience. Yeah, let, let's go for it. <clears throat> so I think we've got maybe four questions so far that have come in that we can address live. So I'll start with the first one that came in. So that's really which, which markets is Smart Button <clears throat> currently active in, and is this including the U.S.? Yeah, so um, we are active, we're primarily active in Northern Europe. We define Northern Europe as Scandinavia, Benelux and Germany, but we follow our customers depending on where the customers have, have properties, right? So I believe we have currently installations in more than 30 countries around the world. Um, so uh, our offices are in Northern Europe, but our technology is, is universal and, and can be deployed in many different places. But outside Europe, um, well, there needs to be a little bit of discussion to make sure that it fits in that specific country. US, there are installations, to specifically to that question, there are installations in the US. The one issue, uh, we are currently not supporting gallons measurements, but we can of course fix that. But some customers have still opted to go with us for the US. Great. Um, and, and the second question, this is also directed towards smart buttons. So is the technology better suited for property managers rather than asset managers? I, I would think that it, it really goes hand in hand. Um, it, it's collaboration, but I'll, I'll turn that over to you, Carl. Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think it's it's suited for both and not only those, right? I, th I think when we work with customers and we listed a number of, of personas and roles that are affected and can use the technology, it's a list of 10 or 12 people uh, ac across the, the building here. I don't know, Hanna, if you have some examples of different type of people you're working with there. Um, well, it can vary um, a lot. We all have our challenges, right? So uh, what is important to know is that wherever you are in the process of connecting the water uh, meters or um, to digitize everything, it really doesn't matter. We will start where you are and then we will work from there. So you can enter partnership even though you have come quite far or not. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. And um, it can be, um, it can be different things that matters more to, to different people. So it's, uh, yeah, it's really, it's, it's hard to say, but it benefits most people that work 
I mean, technicians that work inside the property to um, to the asset managers and and keeping the value of the property and keeping keeping the health um, so they don't end up with big leaks and damages, of course. And Thomas, I, I think you may have a, an example to add in here. Me. Yeah, thanks. A uh, example, I think, I think I can so a good it that that it has a good function uh, so it allows you a portfolio level view oh. and it allows you to benchmark and I think that's quite important for them um, to focus on 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 that perspective as well as uh, for property managers you know, in the past we had a lot of our assets where property managers had to go um, manually check all of the meter readings and you had no clue on what was happening on the asset in between and consequently now that I mean, in the end it just takes a picture of the meter, re meter reading so they can get it digitally they can now have access to the platform and because more and more people are using uh, smartphones and goals so they can use it for their own portfolio which they're managing so i think there's a great benefit to all also even facility managers um is uh, is a key aspect um so i think it I mean, like in the end on every asset as i've mentioned before you have an ecosystem and depend that depend how you look at it smartphone can have a dedicated function for every person in that ecosystem it's just clearly making the link making a process and then ensuring that the right person is identified for every link in the chain which you're trying to connect nice okay great great example of an application and also, thanks thomas yeah. So uh, with that, I'll turn it to the, to the next question, um, which is kind of it's double layered, but I'll, I'll direct this towards the Cromwell team. So basically, how many buildings have you been able to implement the smart cotton technologies for and kind of what was the timeline around that? And then secondly, is really the uh, what was the timeline from hardware installment to real data access? So we can start first start with kind of maybe the scope of, of the technology being implemented. And then secondly, what was the timeline from data access or sorry, implementation to data access? Yeah, I can answer that. Um, if I look at the Netherlands, um, that didn't take more than two weeks to uh, to make sure that we were on site. Uh, we got the gear in, um, then went to the site, put the gear on, plugged it in, and within a day we had the information. So I think within two weeks, uh, everything is set. And looking at our portfolio, um, I've got it on screen at this moment, uh, but I think we got like for the Netherlands, uh, 10 buildings online, uh, even with uh, more than one meter on site. And we're looking at the possibility to create uh, sub meters within uh, an office building to make sure that every tenant uh, knows exactly how much water they are uh, using, consuming. Great, thanks. Thanks for that. And maybe, maybe AXA, do you want to? Um, someone from the AXA team want to add in? Um, yeah. Maybe the scope, or or if there's anything different in terms of implementation. Definitely, I think Ali, some some great points were raised here. I hope my connection lost, uh, and then my laptop doesn't fly away. But um, <laughs> on, on that front, I think we started with a handful of assets in, in Benelux or approximately our hotel portfolio and, um, and a couple of residential assets. And then um, what we did is what we typically do when we see that something works is we try to apply it to a much larger scope. So we brought SmartFatman to the German portfolio. You we were like, guys, you did 12 uh, assets, let's do 200. And uh, on that front, we designed together, or it was a journey together on how to approach from a handful of assets, this large uh, portfolio and develop with them a complete your know, rollout process. So together with the SmartFatten team, we did a project management. We identified key stakeholders internally on the, the property management side and really developed a, a, a process for larger scale rollouts. So now we're trying to do the same in the other geographies that we cover to ensure that the same process is followed, that we can do it in a short time frame. It took us about, let's say, Ali, Carl, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but about a year to get uh, approximately 200 assets uh, operational in Germany alone. And we're now at 338, approximately one and a half year later. So it's a massive amount of uh, progress which has been made in a short amount of time. And I think that um, in a short, 
I did the first step is design, I did designing this kind of process. How do you approach it? The stakeholders and moving forward. And, and SmartFatten has been a great sparring partner along the way with whom we've learned a lot uh, in terms of, of how to tackle this kind of large portfolio level approaches. Um, and now we're moving to the next step, which is expansion and uh, quality review. Nice, good, good to hear. And, and Caroline, from the public AI perspective, um, how, how have you been approaching this? Uh, yeah, we we already, as I said, we already have uh, the meters uh, covered, um, and we are now during the spring uh, implementing this new uh, way of work. But I, I think it's more related to us. What takes time for us is more related to our uh, own processes and to know how to. And make sure that the right person gets the right information in the right time. So um, the technology to be implemented is is not uh, does not take that much time. But uh, we need to find an efficient process to work with the deviations we find, and, and how our uh, uh, technicians will handle it uh, practically. So uh, a few months from now, I think we will be up and running. Uh, and maybe if I can, okay. yeah. if yeah, I please, can provide please, some additional on. perspective to the Fabergier case, there is no hardware involved from Smart Button there. You had already connected everything. You had data being collected, right? But yeah. this was the question of, of you know Smart Button's uh, contribution there is just to, to run it through our platform to analyze the data and get the alarms and so on, and then you're distributing it via your own systems to the right people here. And, yeah. You're pointing to the fact, which I think everyone is pointing out, that it's, it's well, technology is one side, you need to get the data and get the loans, but how do you engage the whole organization to really take action around the insights? That's, that's also a very important factor where we need to partner very closely with the customer. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so we've got about eight minutes left, and there's still a couple of questions that have come in. So I can I can start with um, one directly. Just this is actually a question for the Gresb team, which you know I'm the representative here. So that's around: is it a requirement for Gresb that the metering is automated? So in terms of the data that we collect, we of course rely on our participants to submit the water data, energy data, carbon emissions data, etc. It's not a requirement that that metering or sorry that that data that's being submitted comes from a smart meter however there is an area of the assessment where we look at um, basically the implementation of smart metering and whether that's been done at an asset level so if that has been done at an asset level there is of course um, points contributed to that if it is if smart metering technology has been applied but in general the way that data is collected what we score is actually is there data present so whether that's coming from invoices smart metering etc um, it's as long as data is present, you can, of course, um, receive those points for that specific asset in terms of data coverage. Um, another question I've got, and this is directly for the Cromwell team. So do you have tenant portals for the occupiers to measure their own usage? So basically, can a tenant log in or an occupier log in and understand their own usage and can they, they access that information? At the moment, no, um, because um, it's still a difficult journey to get um, tenants to share their data, specifically on water. I think we we are we've had, in France specifically we've engaged a lot around energy data, um, but then water is the next step, um, and we're trying to factor that in our uh, lease agreements. But this is an ongoing journey, so at the moment we don't have any tenant that are. Um, sharing the water data except for a number on an email or on an invoice so this is very basic so you can see there is a long journey to go to capture data on the tenant side however i think um from we we get more and more requests around not just energy but waste and water so um we try to see um how we can um give them give them access to product for, on the dp side it's possible on the smart button side this is something we need to once we have identified the 10 meters uh, and and maybe through some metering because this is also um a step that we need to do in most of our light industrial assets um so when we get there um yes we, we we make sure that they have access to their own data let me just jump in there uh, something um in the netherlands for one or two objects 
it is possible. Um, one of the objects, objects is a uh, single tenant. So we grant them access, of course, uh, to make sure that they keep track of their own consumption uh, to create awareness. Um, and one of the other uh, objects is just to give them an insight. It's a multi-tenant uh, building in which they have a, a larger part than uh, all the other tenants, uh, one tenant that is, um, so they can have a yeah view of what water usage, uh, how much water usage it is uh, at, at that property. So it, it is possible, but I think um, in case it is a single tenant, it's far more easier to um, act on that. Um, and in the case we have sub meters for the future, I think that's going to be uh, a single point of uh, login then for a sub meter uh, on, a, on a location. Over to you, Thomas. Great. Thanks. Thanks to both on the Cromwell team. I think um, I, just given the time that we've got left, I think what we can do is just follow up with just the la one more question, which is really regarding portfolio rollout and cost effectiveness when you're looking at a larger portfolio. So. Carl, I think you you mentioned you could start with this one, so I'll, I'll turn it to you to kick that one off. Yeah, <clears throat> so portfolio rollouts is of course very very important for our customers. They want a solution that works across the whole portfolio. And uh, I just share from Smart Matters perspective, this is really what we're there to help with. And uh, I think our largest deployments, our largest portfolios, is more than a thousand assets, and we've done that in in less than a year actually. So. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I'd really be happy to talk to anyone who's interested in portfolio rollouts of how we can help with that. Okay. Um, with that, I mean, I, I think we can go ahead and wrap up. We've really covered most of the questions. So if there was anything specific that we may have missed, we'll, we'll do our best to follow up directly with that person that asked the question. Um, but yeah, from there, I think we can go ahead and close out the event. So. Um, Carl, uh, do you want to um, uh, maybe close us out? Sure. <clears throat> well, thank you, Chris, for having us. Thank you to our panelists for sharing all of the insights and for sharing some of the examples and best practices of how we can work together to advance the water issues in, in, in the ESG strategy. Uh, and thanks to all of the audience who have joined us today. And I hope we'll meet. Uh, and we're very open to have a discussion about how we can help you also with water management going forward. So feel free to reach out to the smart button team, or I think also the panelists will be open for a discussion on, on how they're uh, handling the situation going forward.